me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Profound things. Oh, jeez. Profound thoughts. Hi, Ken. <clears throat> hello. Do you want to say hello to Howard in the class? Hello, Howard. Hello, class. I work at the museum, uh, which is the uh, journalist museum, a museum of news, museum in Washington, D.C. And um, I got the crazy assignment to go talk to Pulitzer Prize winning photographers. And to and that was it. That was the assignment. Go interview Pulitzer, uh, Pulitzer photographers. And they've been given the award since 1942, and they give two a year. And so we started, we did the first interview in 2002, in, in December of 2002. And since then, we've done, I've primarily done most of them. Uh, we've interviewed 70 different Pulitzer Prize winning photographers. Um, and um, it's been a really cool project. We've done 18 and a half hours worth of movies uh, and um, on the individual stories. And we also did a feature film with our friend David Dill, who you, uh, Paulette knows well. But in that, uh, the other big project that I uh, worked on, among others, uh, was I did a film on 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, to answer your question, uh, that the, the best interviews um, that I've done in, for both the Pulitzer and the 9-11 have this emotional quality to them. Mm -hmm. And that uh, when you're interviewing somebody well, you are... You're in their moment. They're telling you a story because it's a voyage of discovery. You're not there to give them a hot light treatment, you know, to be the 60 Minutes reporter to try to get them to, you know, a gotcha type of a thing. You're, you're interviewing somebody because you want to know what they have to say. You want to know what their experience is. Good interviews, when you get a person back to a specific place in time, um, then they remember and the things come rushing back. And when you're able to do that with someone you're interviewing, you know you're doing it well. That, that you allow someone, um, Paulette likes to talk about, you like to talk about uh, safe places. Well, if, if your interview is creating a safe enough place where people can be honest with you, yeah. you'll find that they'll go back to these places and, and that you'll get good stuff out of them. With, with this guy, he was tough because he's this really, this really hardened guy. And he had been really hard to agree to do the interview. He didn't mm. want to do the interview. Mm. Um, and, and so, but I pestered him and pestered him and pestered him. And then I finally got him to sit down and do the interview. And then he tested me over and over during the interview where he was like, he was teasing me and he was being, you know, he was sort of counter punching me and he was being sort of like, he was being kind of, you know, kind of tense with me. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of took those shots and absorbed those shots. And because he realized that I knew what I was talking about, because I'd interviewed so many other Pulitzer photographers that he, he kind of, he realized that I was there for a reason. I wasn't just checking him off a list, that I was like, I really wanted to hear his story. And after a little while of sort of combativeness in his case, um, he kind of let his guard down. And then he, he let me actually interview him and he became, you know, he became very honest. And, yeah. and it's fine that you, you, no matter what kind of personality you're interviewing, you can find an entry point to make them comfortable. And there are a couple of tricks to that. Number one is to listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Seems so obvious, but you have to listen to what they're saying. You have to look them in the eye, you know, nodding and looking at the person and really sort of understanding and looking at them mm -hmm. uh, because that relaxes people. Particularly you have to realize now with these flip videos and stuff, it's not as intimidating, but if you have the big TV lights and whatnot, it's scary to be interviewed. Yeah. It's scary to be interviewed even if it's a flip video because people aren't used to telling their stories. They're like, okay, quick, tell me a great story. And you, and you, so, so it's scary to be to be interviewed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the uh, there are a couple of other things that I that I like to do um, that uh, I never do interviews with notes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I haven't done the research because you want to know about your person, you know, where they're from, where they went to school, what stories they've done, and and this type of stuff. You want to know about them, but you don't want to get the feeling that you're that you're just reading questions off a list. Mm -hmm. So I'll make the list, maybe sometimes not, but then I won't bring them to the interview. I'll be sitting on them. So I'm not referring to notes because that makes people nervous if you're referring to notes. My ultimate goal is to have it be a conversation that you wind up talking to a person the way you would anybody, you, the way you'd talk to your sister, the way you'd talk to your, you know, your best friend. Um, that, that you'd say, hey, i tell you a funny thing that happened, and then you start telling a story. You want it to be that way. And a good conversation will go, and this gets back to the not writing down the questions, a good conversation will not go logically from A to B to C to D. A good conversation will go A, and then they'll bring up something that is totally off point. 
And if you find that interesting, you let them go there. Right. You let them go where they're naturally going. And then remember that you still have to get back to these other areas, but it'll open up things that you had never thought of. So if you're busy trying to put people in boxes before you do the interview, then you miss the wonder and the magic of stuff that you would never get otherwise. Yeah. And so that, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a big thing. The other big thing is not to talk. And that's really hard for me because I'm Gabby. If you don't talk, silence. People will fill up a silence. If you've ever been in a, in a, in a job interview, whenever I interview people for a job, I always will not talk. It makes people a little bit nervous. They're like, oh, I'm supposed to talk now. And so if they, 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 they've come to the end of their thought and you don't say anything, they kind of think about it and they go, hmm. And they think about it some more and then maybe they'll like, they'll think to themselves, well, maybe I didn't say that that well. And they'll re-say it for you. They'll re-sum it up in their mind. The whole point of it is to connect with somebody to the point where they will drop their guard. Mm -hmm. and will get you something honest because uh, otherwise it's just sound bites. It's just sort of people will like, here's what you want to know, insert thought here, boom. It's like sort of like a PR type of a deal. Right. And, and that's, what you, that's what you don't want. And, and that's a way to think about an interview. It, am I getting a story? A am I, and, and is it interesting? And if it's not interesting, you're not asking the person the right question. Right? Because, because they have something in there to tell you. You need to coax it out of them. You don't do this to make a ton of money. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you, know, you do it because it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun to tell other people's stories. And, and to be connected in that way. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's the coolest thing in the world to find out about things you don't know about, to expand your mind in different ways. And it's, it's the most natural thing in the world. And it's fun to be with other people and to share the things that are important to them. Right. Right. And that gets back to the, the point that I really like uh, to make over and over, which is not that original, but it is a good one, is that everything is a story. Mm -hmm. Everything is a story. Yeah. And if you don't think it's a story, that's not about me. That's about you. Right. Exactly. And that is the problem with uh, you know a lot of the problems we have in the world, is that people don't see things that way. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you know. But anyway. Very good. Thank you, Ken Crawford. Thank you, Paulette. Okay. Bye bye. More cupcakes. <laughs>